actually starts with sunshine, which I'm going to represent here as a little sun. And then soil, and a seed, and a little grass plant. I enjoy doing this. I hope this works for you guys. <laughs> and then as that grass plant gets rain and sunshine, it grows roots down into the soil. And this is a pretty simple thing, and it turns out it actually happens on more land area on Earth than any other cover type. There are more acres of grassland than forests or tundra or anything else. And um, this is a pretty amazing thing. There's, there's uh, several things involved. There's air, there's sunshine, soil, and water. And what I wanted to talk to you guys today about is how important this combination of these things is and how as managers we can start to um, interact with this system in a way that can actually stop and reverse global warming while producing fiber and food and fuel and flora. It's a pretty cool thing. And the way it works is quite simple. Grass plants, as we all learned in school, produce oxygen and a bit of moisture to the atmosphere. And that's really important. We live in an oxygen-rich atmosphere. But at that same moment, atmospheric CO2, which is the fourth most abundant thing in the air, is a gas. And as a gas, it spreads itself out evenly throughout the vessel it's in. And the atmosphere is a vessel. And so the moment the little microscopic holes on the bottom of all these green leaf plants on Earth open to release oxygen and moisture, CO2 rushes in. And it fills the leaf. So now we have a leaf full of CO2. And then under the sun's energy, the plant pulls soil moisture and soil nutrients in through the little microscopic hairs on the roots and recombines all of that as carbohydrates, which we represent as C6H12O6. And all of the carbon in carbohydrates comes from the air and nowhere else. I always thought it came out of the soil through the roots. Turns out that there is a lot of carbon in the soil, and that soil is really important. But the reason it's important is because there's, the more carbon there is in the soil, the more water that soil holds. And our research project, starting on our ranch in 2008, looked at that whole process and what's involved with getting carbon from the air through the plant into the soil. And in order to understand how that works, um, it's very important to understand that in the soil, carbon actually uh, represents itself in one of three fractions. The labile fraction is fresh carbon, and it's very temporary. Most of it is in the bodies of microorganisms, plant roots. Most of it is actually going to go back to the atmosphere as CO2. It, the, a healthy soil system is very busy. It's full of microorganisms, trillions of them. And as they're going through their life processes, they oxidize carbon, just like we are right now. Every one of us is exhaling CO2 into the atmosphere. We're actually recharging the, the resource base from which all this happens. In that process, some of that labile carbon and the labile fraction is um, consumed and, and is uh, digested by all of these microorganisms. And some of that carbon enters the occluded light fraction. This is interesting carbon because now this carbon actually starts to change the electrical properties of the soil structure and it starts to hold more water in a plant available form. So the more carbon there is in the soil, the more plant there is, this water ordinarily would have passed through the system subject to gravity and left, recharging our aquifers and things like that. But when you have carbon-rich soil, that water now is interested in hanging out the electrical property in the soil, and also with more and more humus and um, carbon-rich soil, there are more sites for that water to um, hang out in. And then after more processes, some of that carbon enters the heavy fraction. And this can take millions of years. This is fossil carbon. It also stays there for millions of years because this carbon now is chemically bonded inside micro sites within the soil structure and not available for microorganisms. This is really important to do carbon. All human civilization has occurred where we have carbon-rich soils like that. The, the challenge for us is in our agricultural practices, the conventional ones, when we plow, we actually break up the soil structure and allow 
organisms to digest that, what would have been permanent carbon, and they oxidize it to the atmosphere, so we're getting more and more agriculturally produced CO2 to the atmosphere, and we're burning up our fossil carbon. 